Hello everyone and today I'll be showing you how to model these type of chairs you know with this uh, type of design pattern which kind of makes it look interesting to model. So right now in 3ds Max we will first start out by creating a plane. So I create a plane, I go to the modify tab and then I'll put the length to 1000 and the width I will put it to thousand so now you have this link segments and width segments i'll keep it 10 and 20 a real world map size i'll just tick mark that and i'll just change the color to a nice gray then i'll convert to an editable poly i go on polygon selection or you can press 4 and basically if i zoomed in it is press z and it will just set it will zoom out automatically Make sure that this box is checked select object and then you can select all of these and detach and go here select them press 4 again it will select everything automatically go to polygon selection generate topology edge direction and then skin then you have this now sometimes what now has come properly for me but sometimes you will have um, you know the there will, you will have a void over here so i'll just create a void and show you if it happens like how to do it so basically sometimes you will have something that looks like this something that looks like this so you have to create this so basically how i did it is you can just add a cut tool so I'll just I'll just show you demonstrate and just cut over here and then here and then go to vertex selection and then just move this over here. All right. Now since I already have one uh, point over here, I don't really need this. So I'll just control set it. I'll just move this over here. Now doesn't need to be exactly on top. You can just position it as close as possible. And that's fine now I go to element selection again polygon and then insert just click on this once and then put it to 7 and this is pretty nice and oh sorry and then I'll delete it now what I want to do is attach them so I select this and then I attach to this so now this is actually one object as you can see it selects the whole thing it's one object but it is two separate elements the reason being is that the vertice supposing you take this it looks like it's one but when we try to weld them it actually shows before welding is one two zero three and then after is one two zero two so there were two vertices and now it's one so basically all of the vertices on the corners are all like that so we need to weld all of them so what we do is we select all of them I click on the right click then go to weld and I'll just put it 1mm over here so press there perfect now when we select it will be a full element yeah as you can see now that's good enough now what we'll do is we'll create a copy of this so press shift and drag clone to object okay and hide unselected so just in case we create, uh, you know, we have some errors or something, always create copies and just hide them. So it doesn't slow down your work process at all. But, <clears throat> you know, you don't. if you make a mistake, you don't need to start all over. Now, we will want to create the backrest. So basically, we'll just use this part. So we just bend, bend modifier, we go on the x-axis, and we put this to nine, uh, minus 90. It's going down, so just put it to minus 90. Put limit effect and upper limit will put 200. And the gizmo, we shall just move it a tad bit in the front. That's good enough. So just the backrest gets a bit more, you know. Yes. So this looks pretty nice. Now, what you want to do is uh, basically this type of backrest you want to actually model it a bit more 
you know what I, uh, like you want to add some curve or something so fft modifier so you select the whole thing go to fft control points now as you can see it's a 4 by 4 by 4 that's we are the dimensions like the breadth height 4 by 4 by 4 so if you want to change it then you can always select so supposing on the width on the height i put 6 all right so now i'll have 6 on the height so like this way you can change accordingly and it's just uh, you know gives you more control basically so you can have something like that then move this ahead create this type of curve pull this up a front a bit more yeah okay this looks good enough now uh, over here just select these pull it down a bit like these and pull it back a bit and now when we look at it it looks pretty nice now if you notice this is just a plane so it doesn't have any real thickness so we'll just add a shell modifier i have it over here but then you can always type it out and the inner amount 10 mm i've put it to <clears throat> so this looks pretty nice now uh, we need to create the legs and also the the beams basically so uh, the legs behave like the columns the sides of the uh, chair behave like beams and also if you notice like this back part over here it doesn't have any clear thing that can be a beam so basically if someone sits in you know in real you know in actual practice if someone sits then this part is very weak and it can tear so normally these parts are normally a bit uh elastic they have an elastic property since it's plastic you can uh, we can have a beam just below this you know not messing up with the type of design but just below it so that this thing doesn't cave in too much and you know then eventually break it rests on the beam once someone sits so we'll create something like that so first of all we'll create the beam on the sides and then the one in the front so right now we put another edit body and since this is good again we'll just select the full thing and press shift and drag and clone to object and okay now hide on select it again so you know just if you just make any mistakes you always have a backup i select this one and i select this one and i select this all right so now if i ring it i got all of them and if i connect it now you notice if I ring this, you see this type of weird pattern happening. I don't want that. So that is happening because this one, this edge is connecting with this and then these are all are connecting. So to avoid that, what you want to do is just select this one and then select this one and then ring and then connect these. And that's good. And then ring and connect these. And now we have what we want. So now uh, I have to select these parts. So I press, I select one and I press shift. And then I select the next one. I press control, I select this one, I press shift and I select the whole thing. So it selects full line. Same thing here, I press control, I select this and press shift. And now we have everything. But right now, if we only want the bottom part to extrude and not the whole, this part, so we'll uh, deselect those so we press alt and we deselect what we don't want now the dark red is the ones which are on top basically these, this is sloping inwards if you notice over here it slopes inwards so actually the dark red is actually the underside so we can actually understand which one is the top over here so just de deselect all of this And yeah, this is quite good enough. Now over here also there are some, but we can uh, obviously we can deselect this manually. Press Alt and just click, left click, left click, left click, and left click. Now what we need is all over here, and looks good. Now we extrude, we right click and extrude, and we extrude down. Now you have group normals, local, and by polygon. By polygon is they will all extrude individually. Local normals is they'll extrude like this way and group is a go down together all together. So I'll just use group 
I'll add one more and I'll pull this down even more till I'm all right with it, you know. So this looks pretty good. I'll just scale this out a bit. So basically also uh, what happens is the legs, if you notice the legs of the chair always go outward, you know, to get more ground and it should not fall over. So right now I just select this, uh, these, the ones for the extrusion of the leg, which ones I want. So just select all of them which I want by pressing control and left click and now right click extrude. Now this one is extruding in a weird fashion, but that's all right. We can fix that. For now, this is quite good. Now we go to the front view, select all of these, and we go to make planar in the edit geometry and set. Now we go down as much as we want. I think this is pretty bit more up. I think that's pretty good. And we'll just move this out a bit and this a bit more in. And looks pretty nice. Now we will connect. So basically over here, once we smooth it out, it'll become like a, you know, like a circular part. So we don't want that. We want it still like, you know, like a rectangular shape at the bottom. So connect and we move this down a bit. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. We have the front beam, we have the side beams, but we don't have the back. So right now we need to create the back one. All right, so what I want to do is, so basically you can see these, uh, these ones over here. So basically I want to connect these. All right, so by leaving a small little gap here, these ones will connect. And then once a person sits on them, it will still touch this beam and this thing won't completely, you know, it won't break. So what I plan to do is I'll just ring this. I'll connect it. I don't want uh, such a thick line, basically. Such a thick beam rather. i just press W. I will select edge constraints. So you don't change the geometry and I'll select these. Go here and you right click, or we go to border selection, we click that one and we select this one. And then we go to, where is this? Where is it gone? Edit borders and then bridge and now we have this now if you notice it's going right through the the design you know it's kind of weird so basically we can obviously edit it and pull it down a bit so what we'll do is we will go back and we press 4 so when you press 4 it selects the whole thing the whole beam so now we will detach it so we go to edit geometry again we click on detach now we will just edit this part. So what we'll do is select the whole thing, the edges, and we'll create and we'll connect them. So now I'll add one, two, three, four. I'll add four edges, and now I will select this. Go to top view. And select I'm going out a bit. Oops out and it should go down as well select these ones now make sure this line is straight and then this one going down it does maintain that type of slope and it should be good same thing with the sides so here it's here is this line it should be a bit it should be a bit more straight so that should be good enough now when you go to the design it should look like this. There, the design is seen. The beam is below it. So once a person sits, this thing will touch down and it won't break. And the person won't destroy the chair. So it looks pretty nice. 
now obviously uh, I want to add some control over here so what I'll do is I'll select this I'll right click select this one I'll select this one bring it and connect now again four but I don't need four I just need one and <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll loop this I will make sure edge constraint is selected and I'll go as I'll go this about a bit more close. That's good enough. I'll just do it here and I'll go up. Now, if you don't have edge constraints selected, what happens is if you have none selected, you, you can see the this has changed now. You can see this is happening. But once I have edge selected, it's not. That's why you need edge. So always remember edge and non constraints they're quite handy like that and now what i want to do is i want to select this element and attach it to this object and now i want to weld them so now right click weld 1 mm and correct let me check everything is perfect now if i turbo smooth it it should look pretty good It's pretty nice. You can increase hydrations if you want to. To you know increase the smoothness. Now supposing you don't want this circular pattern, rather you want a type of you know more rectangular shape. So that's possible as well. After all of this, what we'll do is we'll just select the insides. So I select whole object. Go to top view. We select polygon selection and now we deselect the sides. And, yeah. and now, even on the top, we deselect this. And also, we don't need this as well. So, you can even deselect this from your, I believe. Yeah. Now only this part is selected. Nothing else is selected. Perfect. Now we go to tessellate. Now you can see this viewer pattern happening. Just reduce tension to zero. Make sure it is on polygons and not, you know, triangular faces because this is a kind of viewer. Just put it to polygons. That's better. Keep iterations one. And now when we turbo smooth it, it should look something like this. So if we hide this, we have a circular pattern. But when we have tessellate, it becomes much more of a rectangular pattern. Now, even in tessellate, if you have iterations three, it becomes very sharp. Although it does take a lot more time, you can see it has it has become very sharp. Look at this; it's become very sharp. But I don't. I really don't need that. I think one is good enough and turbo smooth the thing one is also decent and here you have your model it looks pretty nice you can have a bit more iterations for the turbo smooth to have all of this smoothed out and look it's pretty neat looks good so here you have the model it looks pretty nice it looks pretty neat as well and let me check the height and everything you know it looks pretty proportionate you can always adjust the height if you're not comf happy with it with the ffd modifier you know you can always change stuff like that but this is pretty nice all right thanks for watching and take care